Good morning. Hello and welcome. My name is Tammy Maxey and I'm with National Agriculture in the Classroom. Today we'd like to welcome everyone to our 2020 National Excellence in Teaching About Agriculture Award Recognition Ceremony. As we get started, let's go over an order of events and a few instructions this morning. Today, we're highlighting the accomplishments of our National Teacher Award winner, Suzanne Squires of Los Olivos, California. If you've not already had a chance to do so, please check out her full video story either on the National Agriculture in the Classroom website or on Facebook Live. There will be an opportunity for Suzanne and her state contact, Judy Culbertson, to answer your questions. So please communicate those questions along through the Facebook chat box. This year, we are recognizing our national teacher winners a little bit differently, as our national conference should have been occurring in Salt Lake City, Utah, but we've had to transition that to a virtual conference this year due to the COVID pandemic. Each of our eight National Teacher Award winners, along with our Agriculture Advocate, will be celebrated throughout the month of June using Facebook Live. The National Agriculture in the Classroom website has a full schedule list of those that we'll be featuring. We hope that you'll join us for each session and learn about how these exemplary educators incorporate agricultural concepts into their core subjects every day. These teachers have worked diligently throughout the school year to incorporate agriculture into their classroom instruction in all subjects and educate their students about the importance of agriculture in their daily lives. This program has been made possible by our sponsors at USDA National Institute for Food and Agriculture along with Farm Credit and we'd like to thank those two groups for making this program possible. Welcome Suzanne. Today we're recognizing Suzanne Squire as a sixth through eighth grade core science electives teacher at Los Olivos Elementary in Los Olivos, California. Her, whose students learn about agriculture and exploring the school's oak trees and invasive species affecting them, participating in STEM activities, learning about something called popcorn genetics, and learning health lessons by maintaining a school garden and incorporating California specialty crops into their garden design. Good morning, Suzanne, and welcome. Good morning, Tammy. Suzanne, tell us about your program. It sounds like you have a lot of things happening. Well, I actually just took over the garden this year. Um, I had my own um, planter beds near my classroom that the middle school students were um, working on. My oak project has been going on for 25 years. Um, it actually stemmed from, I used to be a quarantine biologist for the county of Santa Barbara before I was a teacher. And I would go to the nurseries and the post office and look for invasive species and um, also did nursery inspections where I learned about uh, various kinds of insects. And when I worked um, with the county, I actually would go out to the schools and educate them about invasive species. So I was um, teaching, my, teaching students about them before I even became a teacher. Um, so the oak project, we have several oaks around our school and our valley is known for its oak trees. And so I developed a project where the students go around, um, the seventh graders learn about the different types and the eighth graders actually study the insects. And then I bring the invasive species part into it as the sharpshooter became a problem in the valley because we grow a lot of grapes and there's also a lot of ornamental plants grown so because uh, the sharpshooter was trying to find its way here which uh, it didn't which was good um, we just practiced trapping uh, those insects using sharpshooter traps uh, that the county uses and the kids could see other kinds of flies and things also that landed on it and this year, actually, with the distance learning, my students, uh, one of the experiments that they worked on at home was <clears throat> developing an insect trap so that they could practice collecting data 
on different types of insects that they were catching at home, um, which turned out to be a really fun experiment uh, for them. And so that's kind of how my invasive species has evolved and I'm fortunate that I have samples and um, the California Department of Food and Ag has a great video that I use. So um, that's kind of how the invasive species slash oak project happened. The popcorn genetics kind of just happened on the fly, which is kind of how some of my projects um, occur. Um, we have a, a school garden, but like I said, the middle school kids weren't really involved in it, but the person that was teaching um, the lower grade teacher or kids had some popcorn seeds from Whole Foods that had different colors. And she said, hey, I have all these popcorn seeds. Are you interested in doing anything with it? And so the wheels started turning. And uh, before I knew it, I had uh, one of my old students was trying to get his Eagle Scout medal. So he came and built uh, a bunch of big boxes for the popcorn so we could grow it. and. Uh, I started incorporating the sixth grade who started planting the parent plant. Um, and then they watched the F1 generation show up when they became seventh graders. And then the F2 generation would show up uh, when they were eighth graders. And I'm fortunate that I have them sixth, seventh and eighth grade so I can do that. But I didn't always have sixth grade. So I always just worked with the sixth grade teacher when that was the case. Um, but it's turned into being at such a great project. The kids said last year we had twin um, cobs and uh, kernels and somebody found those and they were all excited. Um, one year we had fungus in our kernels, which affected our production. So we kind of talked about that. So it's just um, a living, you know, laboratory really out in the, the yard in the garden. So um, really enjoying it. And I took the garden over this year, um, which has been challenging, but it's something I really have looked forward to. And my students, they're just really enjoying it. I kind of just give them the run of the garden. What do you guys want to do? What do you want to plant? This year, one of my classes was a more of a aesthetic class. So they wanted to put some flowers in and put an arch and benches and things for people to enjoy the garden. So we did a bulb project where they grew some bulbs in the wine barrels because not a whole lot grows really well in the wine barrels. They don't have a drip system. So um, it turned out great. Um, and you know, we're going to add, we added some other flower seed to it so that when the bulbs are gone, we have some more flowers. So, you know, we had a gopher that was very, very challenging and, you know, science is all about problem solving and, um, figuring out how you can make things better. And it was the gopher lesson was, was quite a lesson because, you know, they plant their plants and boop, they were gone. And. <laughs> One kid stood there and said, I think the tunnel's going this way, but maybe it's going that way. So, um, you know, as, as a teacher, I just feel really fortunate that I have so much support at my school because I can use all these great natural tools that really keep the kids working and have a lot of hands-on activities. Boy, it sounds like you have a lot of teachable moments that happen, which are great for teachers, but it also does lead to a lot of problem solving moments. You mentioned uh, before that you're, you had come up with some problem solving for your students to do as they were receiving virtual instruction uh, due to the pandemic. What types of projects uh, did you have them do at home to mimic the things that were happening in the garden? Well, you know, they couldn't plant their popcorn. And um, so I went out and did it. We did, pulled everything and videotaped myself uh, doing it for the kids so that they could see. Um, we had planted fava beans in the, in the beds to replace the nitrogen. Um, and, you know, they have the little uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria nodules on the roots. And so I was pulling those up and um, showing the kids, you know, what they look like and so that they could see why we were actually planting our fava beans. And so I pulled those out and then showed them how to plant. And while um, 
they watched the video, they had to take notes on it because they have to predict, you know, what colors are going to occur, how many are going to, how many cobs are going to be solid, how many are going to have multicolored kernels. Um, so uh, hopefully when we get back, they'll be able to um, start writing that experiment up. And, um, you know, we usually pick our popcorn in the fall, October, usually. Um, so they'll get to see, you know, what exactly happened. That's awesome. It sounds like you're doing a lot of scientific method with them, all that hypothesis building that you were mentioning uh, as they were working from home. We have had a question come in. Yeah. What advice do you have for teachers uh, that are concerned that they don't have the science background that you do and how can they get started teaching about agricultural literacy? You know, um, I would start small, actually. Um, don't go out and attack the garden right away because it's a big job even for somebody with a science background. Um, my daughter's actually a teacher and, and she's, you know, science isn't her um, big thing, but um, it helps to have your mom as a science teacher, but she's actually turned to California Ag in the Classroom um, quite a bit and um, has used several of their tools it's really easy to use their fact sheets as informational text for the kids to learn about different things. Um, just if you're into um, healthy eating, you can do the specialty crops and have taste tests. We've even done it where we've taken the taste test to the different, the younger grades and um, had them run taste tests and then collected data on which, which things did they like and which things did they not like and uh, made a, a school graph showing, you know, what happened and who liked what, and then just talking about being healthy eaters. So it really fits into just about any curriculum, health, PE. I bring it into PE quite a bit um, with fitness and eating healthy. <clears throat> and she just uses a little garden in the glove activity that California Ag in the Classroom has. And um, the kids just love it. You know, anytime you can grow seeds, that's um, a really easy thing to do. And you can measure your plants and collect data and do scientific, um, you know, problem solving that way. That's awesome. Well, Judy Culbertson from California Ag in the Classroom, Suzanne is singing the praises of your program, and she is your winner. And I know you want to share a bit about what made her your winner. She's a great example. What made her stand out in the crowd and become your winner, uh, and essentially our national a national winner due to that? Well, good morning, and Sue, thanks for all the kudos. I did not pay her to say all those good things. She is, as you can tell from just her description of how she teaches in, the, um, in her science and other um, subject areas, she is just the real thing, and she's teaching real life lessons. And um, I want to share one little thing is um, Sue is the first person um, teacher that we have recognized in 25 years a second time because uh, she does so much, so many great things. You know, sometimes people get excited about a project and then it goes by the wayside and they get excited about something else. But I think you can tell from her real life lessons that she shares with these kids. She's just totally dedicated. And um, uh, another secret about Sue, in the olden days, we used to have people apply to be our teacher of the year. And we found that teachers aren't out there to promote themselves. And so we changed it to a grant. And so people apply for the grant and then we're able to select um, a teacher from those grant applicants. So they're willing to put themselves out there um, uh, to receive a grant that can help their classrooms. And, um, but they, they are not really touting their own um, talents. And we've just, We've been pleased to have Sue. She, she was able to speak at the California Farm Bureau annual meeting to 500 uh, farmers and ranchers and share about her experience. And, you know, nothing's a better uh, recognition for Ag in the Classroom than a teacher who's teaching real life lessons. So um, she's been using Ag in the Classroom because of her background for as many years as I can remember. And I've been here from the beginning. Um, 
we had to cancel a couple of our events that she would have been representing um, Ag in the Classroom at because of the pandemic. But um, we're hoping still to have our conference in September, which is just, what, an hour or two, um, Suzanne? Right. Yeah, an hour away. And that's, uh, so fingers crossed that that will still be there. And at that point in time, we get to award Suzanne with her nice plaque Aww. that, yes. So if we don't see you in September, Sue, we will make sure that we have the proper time and, and um, place to be presenting you with the plaque because you are one person who does not want any attention and yet you do great things. And uh, we're really proud to have you as part of our team. Then I'm going to make me cry. <laughs> it's good to see you, too. Well, they're like my family, so. It, it works. And we're how many? We're probably seven hours apart um, across the state. So anyway, congratulations to you. Thanks, Judy. Mm -hmm. Suzanne, I'm having questions coming in. Are you sitting in the garden right now? I am sitting in the garden. So we see all kinds of beauty behind you. Tell us about, describe the garden to us. Well, um, it's uh, the lower grades did a really pretty mural in the back about the garden, um, which you can maybe see, I think. Oh, yes. And then um, it, we have quite a few planter beds. This actually was supposed to be a pad for another classroom, and then they abandoned it. So then they turned it into the garden. So it, it has a base underneath it, which the gophers don't mind going through. <laughs> um, <laughs> And we have several boxes. Um, I, you know, mainly we had winter crops um, when the kids were around. And not, like I said, we planted bulbs. Um, we have raspberries. We, we, the kids recently wanted to do, uh, we're trying a blueberry plant. We have blackberries, um, a lot of grapes because they do really well here. Um, and then I just kind of went around and, and planted some tomatoes and corn and things like that for them so that when they come back hopefully <clears throat> hopefully they come back then we'll get to see something else growing in the garden so um what support has been the most critical for success of your efforts well i you know um actually it's my school <laughs> uh, i'm really fortunate and i get a lot of support from my school my uh, my office staff is constantly looking for money for me um, for things in the garden which is fabulous I have a we have a Spartan Alliance that is a group of parents and several of them are very passionate about the garden and they've gotten me uh, like some mulch and um, and other things uh, some have donated just uh, gift cards and um, then there's a foundation that we have that raises a lot of money for our school. And um, I actually got another grant from them for innovation um, to get more, um, more things for the popcorn genetics. Um, so that was great. I was able to buy some US, US, USB microscopes, which have been cool because we could look at our kernels um, really magnified. And we were, when we were looking at the fungus, we could see that. And then um, I applied, um, for the county of Santa Barbara has several grants. So I did a care for the earth grant, which I received. So I've, and then our, we have a great community. Um, <clears throat> one of the organic farmers in the area is always giving us seed. And then I have another lady that brings up um, little seedlings from another farmer in Santa Barbara. So. I'm really fortunate. I have a lot of help. And honestly, the gardeners also help me when I have leaks and things in the garden, which is important, so. There's so many questions I wanna ask you. Uh, what's the biggest challenge that you have faced? You talk a lot about gophers. It sounds like you have great funding between your community and others, but what's the biggest challenges that you're facing in your efforts? Um, it's a lot of time to take care of a garden and uh, you know it's it's mainly been the kids and I right now um, and I'm hoping that 
<clears throat> we get a little bit maybe, especially in the summertime, as all teachers know that have gardens, um, everybody just disperses and then, you know, I have to ask the poor office staff to come and help me water <laughs> sometimes in the summertime. So um, it's challenging to, to keep, keep it going and keep it looking nice, but it's really rewarding and the kids really like it. I was definitely sending them a lot of pictures of their strawberries and the things that they didn't get to see. Um, you know, I'm, I'm literally here pretty much every day uh, working in the garden. So that's the challenging part is the time. It sounds like it. And also, it sounds like you said you, in, it sounds like you inherited this garden from yes. someone else. Um, what advice do you have for somebody who's just starting out or maybe mentoring someone to inherit the garden as you did? Well, if you can get somebody that's um, knowledgeable, like a master gardener, or um, we had a group come in that was teaching, um, and because I wasn't involved, I don't know exactly, but it was ecology, an ecology group that came in and taught lessons to the kids and things like that. So um, you definitely need to find somebody um, in your community or an organization that will come in and help a little bit if you don't have that support um, right at school. But other teachers are great. You know, oftentimes you'll find one or two other teachers that'll come in and help as well. That's wonderful. It just sounds like you have made a full school impact. You talked about all three of the grades that you've had. Um, what are some of the changes that you've seen as students uh, work in the garden? Um, it just, you know, I live in an agricultural area and you know, my background actually was that I grew up in the city. Um, my grandpa was a farmer, but that was when Orange County was farms and then it became a city and that's, that's how I knew it. And so I was always saying, oh, you know, these city kids, they really need to learn about what it's like to have garden and where your food comes from. And, and right now with the pandemic, that's become even more important. And I think people are starting to take notice of how important farmers are bringing food to our tables. And you would think that kids around here with the ranches and everything would um, be a little more uh, educated on it, but they really aren't. So um, I just feel like just getting your hands, you know, even just planting a plant. I had, because I had introduced them to a garden, the garden, I had several students go home over the pandemic and start gardens. And I, you know, I'd go to the, the hardware store to get plants for the garden here and they would be out. So I think that, you know, that's one of the positive things of this pandemic is that people are gardening, they're teaching their kids how to garden. Um, they're, you know, it's just, it's just a nice way um, to learn about things and to, to realize that you can grow your own food. It is, and you're so accurate that during this time, families have be begun to experience and experiment with gardening again to get a little bit closer to where their food comes from, and agricultural literacy is uh, happening among us due to need right now. Yeah. I thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you to everyone who's participated in today's recognition of the 2020 National Excellence in Teaching About Agriculture Award recipient, Suzanne Squire of Los Olivos, California. She sets a wonderful example of how agricultural concepts are an exciting way to teach all, about all subject areas. We hope that you've had a chance to learn something this morning and that we invite you to join in on our next scheduled uh, highlight reel, which will be Tuesday, June 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, as we will recognize the National Teaching and Excellent Teaching, National Excellence in Teaching about Agriculture Award recipient, Christine Puckett from Oklahoma. Again, Suzanne and Judy, we thank you for joining us this morning. And we wish you all a good day. Thank you to everyone for joining us this morning. Have a great day. Thank you.